Hello everyone, Cindy Saddleman here for another exciting game show tier maker video. Now, with this tier maker, I'm excited about this one. Because this is going to give you a little insight on a video that's coming out probably February or March when I get around to it. Um, I plan on doing another top five. Top five best, top five worst kids game shows of all time. And I'll be talking about American game shows, American kids game shows, Canadian game sh kids game shows. Uh, there's too many UK ones. There's quite a few Australian ones. I'm not going to talk into those that because I'm not well versed in those and we could be here forever. Um, but before we start the tier maker, I want to give a very, very special shout out to JB Henry, who created this tier maker and also did it on his Twitch channel, which you can find at twitch.tv slash JB Henry XIV. You'll find the link to that in the description below. He does fantastic sh stuff over on that channel. He's got something going on right now called C365, which he's going to beat 100 video games in 365 days. Um, not only are they short games, like he did uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, he did Super Mario Bros. 1, uh, but also some longer form games like to the reboot of Tomb Raider and he just did Fallout 3. So and that's also inspired inspired me to do uh C365 myself. That's going to start on Twitch in a couple of days or by the time you see it, it's probably already started. Uh and those videos will be airing on this YouTube channel as well. So if you miss my streams on Twitch, um, you'll be able to see the videos here on YouTube, but they'll be broken up game by game uh, here on YouTube rather than the long streams you'll see on Twitch. Um, and some of those uh, games will be broken up into different videos. And some longer games that I play will be broken up into separate videos as well. So um, there'll be more content on this channel. Um... And I just want to show you the tier maker that he's done. He has compiled a lot of kids game shows. I believe the number is around 37. Now there are some that aren't here. Um, but those are mainly just the older shows that aren't on here. And there are some emissions because of a rule that he put down and I agree with this rule it has to be a kids game show the contestants have to be kids you could have had a family version of it um, but if kids aren't the sole component of it it's not going to count that's why if you see on this see a lot of the shows that are down there uh, a lot of the hub shows aren't on there um, because Picturica, Kids and Parents, um, Family Game Night, Kids and Parents, um, Game of Life, Scrabble Showdown, Kids and Parents, so they're not on the list. So with that being said, and I'm using the the labels of the tiers as he did. Uh, the top one being GOATS, greatest of all time, of course. Then you have great shows that, they're really good, but they're not the upper echelon. Then you have a good show, but the format is eh. And that is flipped uh, in the next year below. The show is eh, but the format's solid, but it's not that great of a show. And then you have a bad show or curiosity watch. I mean, you can watch it once or twice and then you're done with it. And the one that cracks me up is childhood trauma. I mean, these shows are irredeemably bad. And uh, the rule that he also put down, the final rule, is you got to have one in goats and one in childhood trauma. Um, that's not going to be much of a problem. Um, he had him in random order. I'm just going to 
do them in order. But it has in the alphabetical order that's on here. And we're going to start with the first one, which is Brains and Brawn. Now, Brains and Brawn was a show, I think it was, it was 1993, it was Network, and it would be one of the last vestiges of NBC trying a kid's lineup, and they stopped doing kid's shows around 94, 95, um, it's been, they, I think they tried Saved by the Bell, the new class. I think that might be been syndicated, or um, I don't. I honestly don't know. A lot of those teen shows, like Student Bodies, California Dreams, City Kids, they just blend together. Uh, but this was hosted by uh, Mark Paul Gossier and a random person who is essentially just announces the score and has very little impact on the show itself because Mark does all of the announcing, does almost all of the commentary except for the questions in, like, the first game was like a two-minute challenge, uh, getting his being right, but the format is just slapdash. I'll go more into detail on Brains and Brawn later. That re that's going to require a video. Like, some of the shows on here are going to require videos. Um, because either they are good material for 26 weeks or less, or, God, I might just bite the bullet and just bring back game show garbage. Because um, I will say one of these things I that we're going to talk about he actually requested, and I might do it. Uh, Brains of Brawn is not childhood trauma. It's bad because they had, like, 10% of an idea there and just never expanded on it. It was like American... It was like we have Nickelodeon guts at home, and they just didn't really do much with it. Like, they had the Eliminator, which was, eh. And they had an Eliminator, which is not great. And I am just not keen on seeing another episode. So that might be a video in the future. And then we get to Brain Surge. I love Brain Surge. I think Brain Surge is a fantastic show. Jeff Southpin did really well with that show. They also had a family version, which was pretty good, too. I love how it's more paying attention, the show, than a whole, just random trivia. And, to be honest, it's what I love about it. And I also think it's got one of the best bonus games in kids' game show history with The Grid. Um, when you see somebody complete the 6x6, and win the grand prize. They also win the ultimate prize. It's the prize everybody wants on Nickelodeon. You get to be slimed on a Nickelodeon TV show. Think about it. Not many people get to say that. Is it a goat show? Ugh. I honestly want to put this in goat, but I. it's just not memorable enough. It's a great show. It would be a low-tier goat, upper echelon great show. And then we have Click. Now, I have a personal thing about Click, because the second season was shot in Seattle at Jonas Jansen Studios. Um, one of my former teachers in college uh, actually worked on the show. Um, Click as a format is solid, although you could have one team run away with the show after round two, and it did happen on occasion. Sometimes you have really close shows. Uh, also, winning a computer at that time, 97-98, was also really, really... Uh, that was a sought-after prize for a kid. You get your own computer, and you get all... <laughs> that means you have access to a lot of great games. 
And sure, you can do your score kind of, but let's be honest. If you're a kid and you got a computer, you're playing a bunch of really solid games. I do like the format is more... It's a lot different than your basic kids game show. It's more general knowledge based and more more brain than doing physical stunts. Like the most physical activity contestants, it was just running to a monitor and that was it. Um, it's a great show. Belongs in greats. Now, Nickelodeon did Crystal Maze. Uh, did it for 10 shows. <sighs> I love the Crystal Maze. I thought this was a fantastic reboot. Adam Conover had the whimsical nature of the show down pat. And I think he did it really well. Um, the only reason that it didn't last more episodes was because the pandemic happened. Uh, and then the show was just really expensive to produce. Um, or actually to recreate the entire show. It would require millions upon millions of dollars to create a set for it here in the States. So the cheapest way and the best way to do it was to fly the families to the UK. Um, but they couldn't do that anymore, so the show got cancelled. Which is a shame, because it's really, really good. If you like the UK version, you'll like the uh, US version as well. Uh, it's another great show. Double Dare, Need I Say More, we'll put that up there. Um, it was said in the in J.B. Henry's Tear Maker video that he did with a lot of the uh, crew from uh, the DFIU network in the Dumpster Lounge. You could change nothing about the show, and it would still work today. And it's been proven with that. You have the original Mark Summers version, 86. And then you got to Double Dare 2000 with Jason Harris. They changed nothing about the show, even though they did add the Triple Dare challenge, which did slow things down a bit, but I think that was fine. And then they brought it back with Liza Koshy, and nothing changed. They didn't change the format. It was still the same show, and it was fantastic. Nothing ch needed to change, and it's the show that put... I would... S I can't say it's... It's one of the shows that put Nickelodeon on the map, because it quadrupled the ratings uh, that Nickelodeon was getting at the time. I think it was the show that made Nickelodeon financially solvent. Because of how it quadrupled the ratings. And that, let's be honest, if Double Dare failed, Nickelodeon wouldn't be what it was. I doubt we get any of these kids game shows whatsoever, especially the Nickelodeon ones. We might get a couple of shows... I think we still get Carmen San Diego. I think we still get I'm Telling. Because I think I'm Telling was a development before Double Dare became a thing. But yeah. And then we have Endurance. It's Survivor for Kids. Actually, I can't say for kids. Survivor for Teenagers. And it lasted six years. Six. And all of them were well done. And there's not a lot of backstabbing on this show, even though it could have, but there wasn't. And the challenges were like survivor style challenges, but they were good. And then you have, I love the, uh, the temple. The Temple Challenge for the elimination of the contestants, where you're essentially playing rock, paper, scissors. But in this case, you're playing elements, fire, water, wood, which is essentially Pokemon. So if you replace fire for Charmander, you place water with Squirtle, you place wood with Bulbasaur, you have the same thing. And J.D. Roth, as a producer... I'm actually going to come out and say, J.D. Roth as a producer is better than J.D. Roth as a host. But it's close. And J.D. Roth is a really good host. So, I'm going to move Endurance. I'm going to put Endurance in Greats. And we're not going to worry about the order. This is what I think. Figure it out. 
it's essentially I've got a seeker for kids with a secret slime action. And that's not a bad thing. Although it is quite interesting to see uh, in later episodes. Uh, because the first... We'll use the Summer Sanders version to start. Um, in the first season, a lot of the celebrities were Nickelodeon or Nickelodeon adjacent. Uh, but when you got to the late, the second season, then Family Style, then Wild Style, you got a lot more outside celebrities. Uh, oddly, they got Sherman Hemsley on the show for some odd reason. I think this was when the Jeffersons was on Nick at Night. Then you had a, a bunch of WCW wrestlers on there. Uh, they had Big Show, or back when he was the Giant. Uh, Knobs and the Nasty Boys was there. Um, Chris Jericho was on that show. And the format of saw the camaraderie between the panelists was really good. It did drop off a lot on Wild Style because... A lot of the time, Danny wasn't there. Lori Beth Denberg wasn't there. Um, Danny was on all that at the time, but wasn't really. I mean, they tried to. He was pretty much the Lori Beth replacement on Vital Information, but it just didn't work. Um, the Jeff Suthpin version was also very well done. And you figured out it could be done today, just. You can't. You don't change anything. Um, the only thing that they did change with the South Bend version was two things. One, uh, I think the second and third rounds were shortened to 45 seconds rather than a minute. And they added the Word of Honor where the contestant also got slimed. And that's another big thing about that reboot. The contestant has some skin in the game because they could get slimed as well. It leads me to one moment where uh, the panelists got the word of honor <laughs> and the contestant tried to bail out of there before they got slimed. Jeff held him and both of them got it. So I hope that clip is out there and it, it's just great. Um, do I put it? Uh, no, I can't. It's a great show. It's not a goat. Finders Keepers is a, another interesting one. Um, it was the second kids game show. It was the second show for Nickelodeon. Um, Wrestle Year was the first host. Larry Toffler was the second host. And the format is solid. The payout structure is solid. I do think the Room Romp is one of the best end games. Just the production sometimes could be wonky, um, depending on what season. Um, the telestrators in the f in the West of Your version were really um, sketchy sometimes. Um, the color forms just felt cheap, but you could actually, but using the eye of that big photo of the picture you could actually get a better detail of what you're looking for. And I appreciate that a lot more. Uh, I'm just not sold on the format. So it's a good show. I would watch it, but the format is just... It's got some foibles. Uh, the payout structure means... You could have a blowout. You could legitimately have a team sweep everything in the first three rounds and that fourth and the $100 room searches are rendered useless. And that's happened a couple of times. And then we get to Funhouse. I like Funhouse a lot. I think J.D. JD Roth was a fantastic host. Stone... Scott Stone knew what he was doing with this show. I do like the idea of having these larger-than-life physical games. Like, Dumpo was fantastic. I do like the Glop Machine. And, or the Slop Machine. Tic Tac Schmutz. 
wheel of schmutz. And then you had a built-in pool for later seasons. The f titular funhouse itself was fantastic, and the Grand Prix race, while fun, um, was outclassed a lot for the UK version. With that being said, I love everything about it. Once again, it's not a GOAT. It's a great show, but it's not a GOAT. Get the Picture is a show that I'm kind of shocked only got two seasons. Because it was cheap to produce. And here's my theory on game shows in the 90s. Any game show with a video wall as its main feature is made 20% better. Makes the show 20% better. And Get the Picture's big thing was that big video wall. So it was 20% better. Michael Malley was a little sedate in the first batch of episodes, but the second batch of episodes, he had that same energy as you would see on Nickelodeon Guts. And uh, who didn't pop uh, when he would yell, Power Surge! Like, I'm not going to yell Power Surge because while well, I'm taping this, people are sleeping. So that's not going to happen. Um... But the format also lends itself to blowouts. Big blowouts. Which is fine. Um, then you get to the second season, it cheapened a lot of stuff. Instead of playing for cash, they were playing for points. Um, and also, the bonus game was made a lot harder. 45 seconds was too easy. 35 seconds was too hard. Um, 40 seconds was would be the perfect sweet spot. And I think it would have been better off there for 40 seconds. And also, instead of giving $100 for the cash, $100 for each correct answer in the bonus game to each contestant, instead, the $100 was split. And in a couple of instances, they only got one picture, so the most the kids got one on that day was 50 bucks. It's a good show, but the format... If it was season one, it would be great, but season two drops it down a level. But then again, what I figured out is they made 75 episodes of season two, 40 episodes of season one, so a budget cut had to be made somewhere, and potentially they were giving away almost $1,000 in the front game, and I'm not sure... The extra thousand dollars meant anything to the budget. But anyway, we move on. Gladiators 2000. Yeah, we're going to put you... We'll talk about you for a bit. Um, it never got traction. In a good way. Mainly because the fixtures of Gladiators were the Gladiators themselves and Mike Adamley. Mike Adamley was not there. So they had Ryan Seacrest and Maria Sansoni for season one. Maria Sansoni left after season one. She was replaced by Vanessa Miller. Or Valerie, no, Valerie Miller. Because uh, Valerie Miller wound up to do Peer Pressure. Another terrible show. Is Peer Pressure on this? Oh, he forgot Peer Pressure. Oof. Peer Pressure was awful. Um, and the games, they played like five games. They had five games on that show. They had Food Pyramid. They had The Wall. They had Bones, which was like Snapback. Um, they had Assault and Swing Shot. Now, they played Swing Shot normally. Swing Shot was normal. Food Pyramid was not normal. Wall was normal. And I think what makes me a little, a lot upset about this show is that this was like season one of Gladiators Train to Win in the UK. But Train to Win improved immensely after season one. Got rid of some of the guff. And it was essentially a kid's Gladiators. 
Sure, they didn't play Powerball, but they played a lot of other games that would make sense. Um, like Hit and Run, uh, Assault, or Danger Zone, as they called it over there. Um, I'm pretty sure they played... No, they didn't play Pyramid. Um, but they played uh, Pursuit. Um, just a lot of great games were done with Train to Win. Uh, and Gladiators 2000 didn't. And the Eliminator was altered, and it, I am not a fan of the 2000, Gladiators 2000 Eliminators. Like, you could have had the contestants do the full Eliminator. Like, how cool would that slife, well, then they could have blown out their knees. Um, which did happen to a contestant or a freaking ankle. <coughs> yeah, but I don't know. It's just not well produced. And that theme is annoying. Yeah, I gotta put it here. As a Gladiators fan, it just infuriated me. And so did this show. Go for a TV. I'm just gonna put you right there. Um... Long story short, you had a dime store Sugar Ray as host. You had a female host who was just there. You had editing cuts all over the place that would make Kevin Dunn jealous. The games were okay. Uh, they shoehorned these musical acts. And this is another show like Gladiators 2000 fell victim to the EI requirements. Um, but then again, I don't think that would have mattered if it was on, like, a normal cable network where they didn't have those EI requirements. Scott Sternberg produced this show, and Scott Sternberg ruins everything that he touches. Um, I, I, I'm not, thinking back at it, I really should have done that Scott Sternberg Legacy of Failure video for April Fool's Day back in 2019. Just to shut the door on that. Um, and Go For It TV was the show that J.B. Henry requested me to do. Um, so, mm, watch this space in a couple of months. And now, here's the show that the other two shows aped, and the show did everything right, and that's Guts, and you're going in GOAT tier. I mean, it's living out the sports fantasies of a lot of kids. You know, dunking... If you're 12 or 13 years old, you can't dunk a basketball normally on an NBA regulation size hoop. With this show, you can do that. I also love basic training, and also, of course, Mike O'Malley and Warwick Work's personalities and the chemistry they had with each other was just... Mwah, chef's kiss. And also, I loved how the aggro crack and the show itself evolved over the years. They kept on adding new events. They had the pool events, which kept evolving. The crag evolved to become harder after each season. Um, to the point when they reached season four, which was Global Guts, you had the most extreme version, which was the super aggro crack. Um, you had a revival in My Family's Got Guts in 2008. It had two seasons, but the second season never aired here in the States. Weirdly enough, it aired in Australia of all places, but it never aired here in the States. And then we got Hole in the Wall. Uh, this is here because it did have a kids format with uh, tech... Tech from the real world uh, hosting it on Cartoon Network when they tried to do their CN Real shows. Like, Destroy, Build, Destroy, or Scream If You Know the Answer. No, not no. that was the UK version with adults. Brain Rush uh, for Cartoon Network over CN Real. Um, hmm. I'm not a fan of Hole in the Wall. Um, I don't think the format is that particularly strong I'm gonna throw it here uh, the show to me is eh but the format 
is solid. Like, that same format has been done for almost every version of Hole in the Wall. Like, I honestly think the UK version is the best one, especially season one with Dale Winton as host. Uh, play with celebrities. Like, if it's played for laughs and played for fun, then that's the best way to do it. I will say that the uh, adult version that was on Fox in 2008, if we were talking about that version, it would go right here. Um, but let's talk about the kids' version. The show's just eh to me. And then we get to I'm Telling. Oh, boy. Um, I hate this show. I really do. I absolutely do. Lori Fazzo's not that good of a host. Um, and just knowing that it's newlywed game for kids, that just kind of skis me out. And I use game shows as an escape. And if I'm a kid and I'm watching this, I could just be watching the newlywed game. Honestly. And... It's worth a watch. I'll say that. It's worth a watch. But not... It's not good whatsoever. Although, I think what saves it from childhood trauma is the Pick a Prize Arcade. If it didn't have that, then it would definitely be in childhood trauma. Then we get to Jep. Ugh. It's Jeopardy for kids, um, and Sternberg also produced this along with Wheel 2000. He made some really bizarre choices with this one. I, I not a the not a fan of the idea of dumping stuff on contestants whatsoever. And if you get three in a row, three questions wrong, you're penalized by being out for a question, which I think is not a good idea. I inducted this. It's bad. And this, the failure of this show was the catalyst for, you you, were, you saw Kids Weeks uh, on the actual show. Um, the reason that they're not doing actual Kids Weeks anymore on the show is you had some contestants, parents complain up to high heaven, and the producers just did not want to deal with it anymore. Um, the Emancipation Proclamation blunder uh, kind of sealed its fate. You can... There's a lot of sites out there. That, there's a lot of information out there, so you can look that up. And by the way, I, just a clarification on that part. Even if it was deemed correct, which it shouldn't have, and was correctly declared incorrect, it wouldn't have mattered because it was a runaway. And we're taking away from the fact that the other contestant won sixty plus thousand dollars in his game. Uh, Joker, Joker, Joker is next. Joker, 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 kids version of Joker's Wild. It kind of falls into Jack Barry's wheelhouse because he... The first big show he did on television was Winky Dink and You, which was a kid show. And he had Juvenile Jury, which he did two runs of that. One in the 50s, one in the 70s. I think Jack had a lot of fun with kids. I think if it lasted longer, because I think after it got canceled in 81, that's when the show went to the neon set. This show could have lasted another season. I just... And the questions were made easier. Like, it's fine. It's a good show. Like... You could still win cash as a kid on that show, the bonus game, but the $500 you won in the front game was a savings bond, which was, was an educational bond, which was fine. Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yeah, we're just going to put you right up there. Um, Legends is Funhouse Evolved, and Funhouse Historically Done. Although Kurt Fogg is not that good of a host, um, proven in season two and three was he was made to be more like a commentator uh, for the moat, the temple games, and the run of the temple itself, which fit his style better. And 
I think this. I think he told a story about this where, on Southpin's show, when he had Southpin had the basement show, and Kurt Fogg got hired about a few hours before the show started taping. So he also didn't, and this was after Double Dare rap taping. This was all after what would you do rap taping? I think. So, Summers was barely in Nickelodeon Studios. So, Kirk didn't have anybody to get any information from. Uh, Michael Malley got information from Mark Summers because he was there with Family Double Dare and What Would You Do. Phil, Phil Moore ran into him and got a lot of information off of Mark Summers. Um, Kirk didn't. And so I think that's why he was left to flounder. And it's a shame. We get Mad Libs next. David Sedoni hosts this show. He hosted Wheel 2000 competently. He hosted this show competently as well. Um, this is essentially a mish mishmash of formats. Um, it was big physical game, then a back and forth game, another big physical game, and then few and then the grand prize game um the grand prize the i'll say this about the show it looked good i thought the format was okay but the show was super cheap of its prizes um i think the grand prize was like a stereo or something in some instances um we got some mad libs books and stuff like that mad libs is fun by the way uh, but the show itself is just eh. Like, it's a good format, but the show itself is eh. Um, uh, Make the Grade, um, I don't, I have a history with Rob Edward Morris. Um, apparently, uh, some people do find the old inductions, um, and in 2011, he found it. And he sent me a friend request on Facebook, and I was like, "Oh!" But he was cool with it. Uh, he even said that it was his hardest gig. Even it was his hardest gig. Um, even his gigs that he's got right now as like a choreographer, song and dance person. Um, it was his toughest gig, and like what happened with Kirk Fogg. Um, he only had a couple of days to prepare for the first set of tapings. And so that's a host out of the way. I think Lou Schneider was fantastic as a host. And he would prove that as he would convert his tenure on Make the Grade to being a person on camera for a couple of shows, like Down the Shore, Wish You Were Here. Um, but his main status is as a writer. He wrote for the Goldbergs. He wrote for Everybody Loves Raymond. Uh, he is a go-to writer for a family sitcom. And, uh, he's also won a handful of Emmys. Um, it's a good show, but the format is booty cheeks. And I'll, I'll admit that, even though I love Make the Grade, the format is booty cheeks. Mainly because the fire drill upends everything. And we've had episodes where you had somebody get nothing right. A fire drill is hit. They win the fire drill. Answers one of the easiest questions on the board correctly. And wins the game. This has happened. And it just ruins the show. <coughs> Masters of the Maze is next. Now for Masters of the Maze... Um, J.D. Roth was fantastic. Uh, Mario Lopez, uh, is the Peru of game show hosts. That is... <sighs> I love how that's become a joke. And the format itself was left unchanged except for one thing in the second season where they ditched the... Uh, coin toss style bonus game which they had the prize no prize you fire a laser in the monitor I'm trying to get you fire your laser you had a laser right here and you'd have to tell your partner to fire they would fire and hopefully the monitor would hit prize or no prize um 
Idea price, 3 out of 5. You want a $500 spending spree at the Sharper Image, which probably gets you enough for like a 13-inch uh, TV and a VCR. As for the JD Roth version, if you won the front game, you got a couple of cool prizes. <laughs> um, with the Mario Lopez version, they got rid of the bonus game, so if you won the maze game, then you won the $500 spending spree at Sharper Image. Um, not a fan of having your partner just be like the person who will guide you through the maze, you know, have the controller, go forward, go left, go right, go back, go right, go backward, go right, right, right. And they got rid of that in season two, so you don't have the annoying voice, but instead it would be beef like, oh, something like that. Uh, I love the set design for Season 2. I like the water features a lot. I will be honest, I am putting Masters of the Maze as a great show. I love it, even though it is not that fantastic whatsoever. Uh, then we have Maximum Drive, which was a Family Channel style show. Uh, for Family Channel, around this time, it was the Masters of the Maze and Maximum Drive. Um, if you love auto racing, then this is the show for you. Um, it's a good show, but honestly, it's not really a game show. Let's be honest. It's not a game show. It's a straightforward sports style show. And we're going to talk about another show like that coming soon. And then we have Nick Arcade. Um, my stance of this show has softened a lot over the years. I thought this show was absolutely terrible. Like, I thought the show sucked. Like... If you had talked to me, prevented me, presented me with this list ten years ago, Nick Arcade belonged here. Um, Phil was a product of his time. Uh, the show was a product of his time. It's a good-looking show, but the format is bad. Like, most of the times, the video challenges just sank a whole bunch of time. Like, it took two minutes to get this thing going. And by that time, one video challenge was done. Time was up. Vicky was heading straight to the goal, and you had the type, and you had the sudden death question, which ultimately uh, determined the game 99 times out of 100. Um, also, the bonus game is unfairly derided as hard. Like, I looked it up. Um, out of... 84 some odd episodes the bonus game was won 21 times so it was won at around a 25% clip so it's a fair bonus game just got that stretch at the end of season 2 where after the halfway point of season 2 you had 20, 20 21 attempts where it was not won because they had that sea do level, they had the underwater submarine level where you control the submarine and you try to get treasure boxes, and it was just so cumbersome and so slow, where if you got that game, you had no chance of winning. Like, you could have completed that first game, you could have got the alien game, could have gotten to level 2 with 50 seconds left, and getting into that submarine, you only would have had about 15 seconds for the video wizard. And that wasn't happening. You needed all that 15. And you needed somebody up top at the start. And both of you started at the bottom. And you weren't winning. You weren't winning the computer. You weren't winning the trip to Universal Studios. While well, Crazy Kids falls in the same part as Maximum Drive. It's not a game show. It's a bunch. It was go anywhere, do anything to find kids having fun. Very rarely did they tangentially have something lined up. That was usually when Mark Summers would show up. Um, 
because in the first season, Mark Summers showed up where it was Double Dare versus Wild and Crazy Kids, Double Dare 1. Uh, Mark Summers would show up for Season 2 for Dizzy Bat Baseball 2. And to be perfectly honest, they had a lot of great games on that show. Um, one moment that strikes strikes out on you is they got Arnold Schwarzenegger in early 90s Schwarzenegger peak greatness. And he put on the Wild and Crazy Kid shirt. Your show was made. And that show could have lasted a lot longer. But I guess resources had to be allocated. And I guess Woody Frazier had a falling out with Nickelodeon after season two of What Would You Do? So, yeah. And then Woody Frazier just did all of his stuff for Family Channel afterwards. Either with a show that's coming up later or with Holman Family. Which, if you're a fan of Talk Soup, you know what I'm talking about. Off the Walls next. Uh, this show was made 20% better with the video wall. Sadly, it's the best part about the show is the video wall. Um, the twist of this game is you have three teams and you'd pick a number off of a video wall. You would play the same stunt they did. And if you beat them, you got points. And then the bonus game, you got to compete against a member of the studio audience. And if the studio audience member beats you, they win your grand prize. And even just by appearing on the show, if you lose, you get passes to Disneyland, which is always a good time. Uh, but the grand prize is not that great. Um, it was like a stereo like a cheaper stereo that you get on Mad Libs or an N64 or something along those lines. You don't get I don't think you got any games with the N64, not even Super Mario 64. Even though this was released in like 98, so you I think they had a Super Mario 64 as the pack in. Uh we'll put off the wall Larry Zeno's bad. So yeah, it's a bad show. Uh and then you have Scramble. Jim this is for you. Uh, not that good of a show. Uh, Randall Cunningham was bad. <laughs> I mean bad as a host. He had one bright moment where he, during the commercial break, when they came out of commercial break, he had one of those Nerf dart guns and nailed the Cowboys mascot right in the balls. That's what he did. Uh, the format is wonky, and you had those early 90s cuts, and it just didn't look good. Starcade, I'm going to put you right where you belong, right up there. The granddaddy of video game shows, and did it the best. Sure, Mark Richards sucked donkey balls, but Jeff Edwards was the man. Jeff Edwards studied the games. He made sure he knew what he was talking about with those games. And he gave it socks. He wanted the contestants to win. And that's why Jeff Edwards is amazing. Storybook Squares, it's a curiosity. It's not really a bad show, and it it's weird. It's more curiosity than anything else. If they had the content, if they had the celebrities just be themselves and just like tone down the zingers a bit, um, it would have been fine. Which is what the John Davidson version of Hollywood Squares did during Christmas time. They had good kids as contestants play the game, and they had a shot of winning like a big prize collection or something along those lines. And. It's essentially Hollywood Squares for kids, just not done well at all. The Noise. I like the format a lot. I like Farouk as a host. Uh, and he was doing this around the time, like, BattleBots got rebooted in 2015, so he was doing BattleBots at this time. He was the ring announcer. He was loud. He was boisterous. 
So I, I like the anachronism of him being this boisterous guy hosting a show where you have to be quiet. Um, it's also kind of anthemic of a, or anti-anthemic of a kid's game show where kid's game shows are kind of loud and everything like that, but you have to be quiet here. Um, I think the show is good. It's a good show. The format is just wonky. Think fast. You can go... Yeah, we'll put you here. Like my stance has softened on Think Fast over the years. Michael Carrington was good. Uh, it's just that the show is just horrendously broken. Um, the brain bet... The brain bender is the uh, like the golden snitch somewhat, but not all the time because you could have a team lead three fifty to one hundred, a uh, three fifty to fifty, three fifty to one, no, fifty to three hundred, and it would render the brain bender obsolete. Because even if the other the, the team that had fifty, if they got the brain bender, that'd only be two fifty. They wouldn't win. But at least they got 250 bucks of cash to split, so that's not bad. Uh, the locker room is insanely easy to win. All you have to do is just go from one end, hit every button, go back, do it again. And kids started to figure this out. And it breaks the game. Even though the lackey version, they added the red herring. But once you open up all the lockers, you know where everything is. And you know when you spotted the red herring, you pulled that herring handle. Oh, and lackey sucks. And he once became a religious speaker and got away from show business altogether. Kind of proves there is a God after all. Anyway, uh, video power. If you've seen Video Armageddon, if you've seen the movie of uh, The Wizard, and if you've seen vid the end of the movie, Video Armageddon, where Lucas and all you have the kids playing Mario 3, and you saw that, that's essentially what video power is. Johnny Arcade was annoying, we'll say. But he only hosted, like, half of the show. The other half was hosted by Terry Lee Rotork. And he gave it socks as an announcer, and explaining what was going on in these games, and whether he was pick their kids were picking up power-ups and everything like that. So, uh, the tournament format kind of doesn't sit well with me, but I understand it. Uh, I'm going to say you know, the, sh the format is fine. The show is just eh. I'll put it right there. Wild Animal Games. Wild, wild, wild. I want to kill the pain. Uh, wild Animal Games sucks. Um, if you've seen stuff like What Would You Do, it's exactly what it is, just with animals. And you have the, uh, pool bonus game at the end, which does nothing to me. It's... It's just a collection of bits with animals, which this stuff has been done a lot better on What Would You Do when they involved animals. And you had a better show involving animals with kids on Animal Planet Zoo Venture with J.D. Roth. Kel Surprise J.D. Roth so does something a lot better than most people. And it was the weakest part of uh, Family AF TV which was Masters of the Maze uh, Maximum Drive I'm Telling Wild Animal Games and Family Challenge. It was the weakest part. Wheel 2000. Uh, it was fine. Um, Cyber Lucy was annoying at times. David Stoney did it well. Um, this also answers this question, how do you screw up Wheel of Fortune? Um, this is how you screw up Wheel of Fortune. Um, they had this weird physical challenge stunt that they had to shoehorn uh, with these big 250 du 50 point spaces and it just 
was off. Um, but aside from those big physical challenges, which didn't work too well, uh, it was Wheel of Fortune. It was fine. Uh, it show, but the format, they didn't mess with the Wheel of Format formula too much. Uh, then you have Where in Time is Carmen San Diego. Uh, the show... Compared to Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, I'm going to do both of them at the same time. No, no, I'll just do Where in Time first. I do like the trial. The Trail of Time, that bonus game. I think it was a lot fairer than the. You got stuff with a huge map in Where in the World. Um. Where if you got stuck with Africa or in some cases Asia. Uh, you were screwed. Uh, but with the Trail of Time, you know, if you paid attention to uh, the show, if you paid attention to the questions and what was being told to you, you would have succeeded the Trail of Time. Um, also, everything was essentially done in-house and not as well as where in the world was done. Kevin Shinnick was a bit of a downgrade from Greg Lee. Like, he was stiff. Absolutely stiff. So, but they gave away a computer as a grand prize, and that's always solid. Um, it's a good format, but the show needed work. I think, uh, I'll put it here. It's still enjoyable, but where in the world is absolute goat material? It made learning fun, and that is hard to do. For a kid's show, you make learning fun. Very few shows could pull it off. Where in the World did that. Bill Nye the Science Guy definitely did that. And it became a central piece of what was the PBS Kids lineup. Like, I know Square One TV uh, preceded Carmen Sandiego, but Carmen Sandiego built off of what Square One TV did with math and did it with geography and did it better. Greg Lee was part of the Nickelodeon learning tree. He, I, I think he did Total Panic in 89 for Nickelodeon, was the warm-up guy for Family Double Dare and warm-up guy for a lot of other shows as well on Nickelodeon. And that showed off in the hosting and just Lynn Thigpen as the chief and Rockapella and everything around that show was fantastic. Um, no more needs to be said about Where in the World. And now for the final show, You're On, You Suck. I hate this show. It is the worst Nickelodeon game show there is. Um, there is nothing exciting at all about you're on and the only time where anybody gets remotely involved that isn't the contestants trying to get these uh vacation goers to do stupid stuff uh, is the big runaround i i did an induction about this show so just go Go to the YouTube, just go to the old website, GabeShowGarbage.com. You're on there. Just read that. I hate this show. I absolutely do. And that is the tier maker for a bunch of kids' game shows. Uh, once again, I thank JB Henry for creating this. Uh, once again, go to his YouTube channel, uh, JB Henry XIV. Go to his Twitch channel. For a lot of great content, whether it be his C365 stuff, whether it be Wheel After Dark, whether it be other great shows that he puts on, go check him out. And I want to thank everybody for watching. So if you like this, thumbs up the video. I'll have a link to the tier maker, so if you want to do your own, um, go to the Game Show Garbage Discord. 
um, which a link is below, so you can check that out. Also, um, share this on all the socials. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the bell so you get notified of new videos. Uh, and if you want to help support uh, this wonderful channel like these wonderful people have, that's right, these people have, go to patreon.com slash gameshowgumbo. I'm Cindy Seidelman, and we will see you all next time. Bye, y'all.